I don't know why we don't have nuclear cars. Oh, God. I do. No, think we've got nuclear submarines, nuclear aircraft carriers. They fiddled with nuclear um, cars in the 50s, the idea of them. They, why don't we try it next week? We'll build a nuclear car. I mean, how hard can it be? Jeremy, last week you tried to build a simple police car and the wheel fell off. I think nuclear fission's a bit advanced for now. Well, just don't let me do the concrete that surrounds the reactor. I've made it leak and now I've got two heads. <laughs> Look, I've been thinking, you know the government's very keen for us to embrace electric cars. Mm. I was wondering, what if, on all the motorways in Britain, you put over the top of them a sort of metal grid fed with mains electricity... What, you mean like dodgers? Exactly. So you leave home, you drive to the motorway with your normal petrol engine, and then you extend an antenna, mm. you pull onto it, Abba's Dancing Queen starts, all the change falls out of your pockets, and you're on your way to Scotland. Well done, James, you've just invented the electric train. No, Moving on. No, 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 no. <laughs> He hasn't, because if you think about it, a train stops in a station, then you've got to get from there home, and there's just some Nissan full of vomit, basically. This way, you get to your motorway turn-off, start your normal engine, you can... Why don't exactly. they do that? Because then just outside Watford Gap, some gormless yobbo could leap onto the running board and try and chop, uh, chat up your daughter. For the full Dodgem experience. Yeah. You could even redesign cars a bit, so when you turn the steering wheel so far, the front wheels turn around and you go backwards. No, and you're, being just, no you're, you're being, being silly. You're being silly. It's a I don't know. The only thing I can think of that's wrong with it is that the Dodgem culture means that, say you lived in Devon, you might get up and go to drive onto the M5, but overnight they'd have moved it on to Shropshire. That was the answer. <laughs> no, I... Sorry, I think we have just solved God, everything. Why don't they do that? I don't it know. It does work. I think inadvertently, James, that's brilliant. We're going to win you. a BAFTA now for that. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> right, now, you know, every single week you open up the newspapers and there's another story for, of uh, somebody who's blaming Satnav for driving into something. You yeah. know what I'm on about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah There was one this week. I've got a picture of it here, OK? These clowns drove this van into this river and then said, oh, well, the sat -nav said go down here. Now, I'm sorry, that's not the sat -nav's fault. It's because the van was being driven by a blither of idiots. <laughs> it is. He saw that and just carried on. Yeah, sat -nav says down here, so right. I'll go in here. If it said, drive to the top of Beachy Head and keep going, would you do that? No. There's more of this stuff. Look, there's a, there's a truck driver here. He was driving from uh, Turkey to Gibraltar to, mm. uh, to deliver some... Sc uh, should I say this again? <laughs> <laughs> There's another one here, look. There's a truck driver. He was driving from Turkey to Gibraltar to deliver some cars, and he ended up in Skegness. <laughs> Even I know that Skegness is probably not on the way from Turkey to Gibraltar. Well, and he tiny, says, this is sat now. How tiny does your brain have to be as you get on a cross-channel ferry to think, yeah, this is right. This is the quickest way from Ankara to the south of Spain. No, honestly, there's more examples here. There's somebody here, OK? There's a skit lorry got stuck under a bridge. Driver said, oh, it was the sat-nav's fault. It isn't. It's yours. Uh, and then, my absolute favourite, there's a woman here. I'll spare her her blushes, OK? Paula. <laughs> Seely. Age 20. But it says here that you drove into the path of a speeding train and then blamed your sat-nav. It, honestly, the train actually hit her car. Now, honestly, we've got to stop this endlessly blaming cars for everything and start mass executions of the stupid. <laughs> Take them outside, shoot them in the back of the head, and then nobody will get lost again. Now, Maserati GT, OK? You've seen them around uh, these days. I've uh, got a picture of one here. And you know what this reminds me of? No. Cherie Blair. Oh, God, it does! <laughs> You've ruined it forever! Look at it! It does! It, no, Don't what? take it to Balmoral, it'll get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it'll forget it's contraceptive. <laughs> and it'll sell all the stories of what you got up to in it. And it'll have a Scouse starter motor. <laughs> Mind you, it'll probably come with um, two flats in Bristol, so that's all right. <laughs> Last week, OK, James and I brought a bit of minor congestion to London, OK? in our large cars because we got stuck for a moment or two, OK? Well, this week, London Transport went one better because you know those bendy buses? Well, the bendy bit in the middle stopped bending and it crashed. Here we go. Uh, absolutely jammed up the centre of London. Do you know how many bendy buses there are in London now? No idea. 500. And guess how many accidents they were involved in in 2006? 500. 1,751. They just take them out to crash into things. What actually is the point of a bendy bus? 
I mean, what's, why is it Benny? Why isn't it just a double-decker? Well, so, I mean, they have 75% more accidents than other buses. There are three times more collisions with cyclists than normal buses. And I know why that is, because the drivers wait until you get halfway along next to the bendy bit on your bicycle, and then they turn right, and then you're just surrounded by bus. It's well, it serves you right for riding a bicycle. I don't yeah, care well. about that. <laughs> the reason they say they have them is because they've got three doors and they can load and unload people faster. Well, when they say people, they mean old people. They want to go to the post office. But now they've had to employ 150, oh, I don't know, inspectors or something, at our expense, to go on those things to make sure people aren't fair dodging, because it's easier to do that. I honestly think the time has come to stop farting in our studio. <laughs> I honestly think the time has come when we stop thinking of these things as an alternative to the car, like we keep being told to do, okay? Because they're not. Nobody is ever going to say, no, I won't take the car this morning because I want to be chauffeured to work by a psychopath, catch cancer from its exhaust, and sit next to a sweating rapist. <laughs> this is the last one of this series. It may be the last series. Ever. Yeah. You know when we were all kids, you lied about how fast your car went? It was the big lie. Yeah. Oh yeah, your dad, my dad's called Tina, does 140. Yeah. yeah. That sort of thing. There wasn't a village in North Yorkshire that didn't have a Yamaha Fizzy that had done 75 miles an hour. Exactly. That's what you lied about. There's now a new lie. I'm getting this a lot and I bet you are too. People coming up to you at petrol stations and making up preposterously enormous mile to the gallon figures that their car's doing. Yes. Yes. I know exactly what you mean. Well, it's now spread to print, okay? There was a story appeared in the, uh, it's, a, it's a newspaper called uh, The Observer. <laughs> and um, there was some bloke here, he's criticising what he says wasn't a very scientific uh, review we did on the price. You know, we got it to do 17 miles to the gallon. Yeah. He says he drove to and from Dorset, I'm guessing from London, OK, at standard motorway speed, i.e. between 80 and 90. Uh, and he averaged just below 60 miles to the gallon. In a diesel? No, petrol. He says petrol. Cobblers. Utter cobblers. Utter. Even with your Christian motoring, you could not do <laughs> 60 miles to the gallon. Well, it, assuming my panda does 80 to 90, <laughs> which I don't know, uh, you know, that would do, a, well, it would do less than 40. He's talking rubbish. He is talking rubbish. He's the sort of bloke you just know if he ever filled in one of those surveys. You've put the box nine inches and above, <laughs> and I lost it when I was 11. <laughs> Yeah, he tells his mates in the pub what it was like storming that embassy. Remember? <laughs> Listen, do you know, my blood group, there's only 12 people in the world's got the same <laughs> one. Just... So we name him? No. Yes! Well, let's just say his name begins with A and ends in Anthony Andrews from mm. The Observer. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. A, Anthony Andrews, if you really have managed to make a petrol-powered car do nearly 60 miles to the gallon. You have actually saved the Western world from economic collapse, and I think you should come on Top Gear and explain just how you did it, because that's incredible. Uh, so write to us, please, BBC uh, Television. One million, Wood Lane. <laughs> London, uh, W, 12,000 trillion, infinity. <laughs> well, I've Tell got a bigger postcode than you. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what the Earth looks like from space. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, a new car. This oh, yes. is the Toyota IQ. And now, I've got a thing about this. That's called the IQ. Yes. Why is it that all small cars these days are given names that imply they are clever or the people who buy them are clever? Like mm. a smart. Because it should be the other way round. Because people who buy... I mean, it's like the Rolls-Royce Dunderhead Coupe. They're buying big cars. <laughs> yeah, stupid. Yeah, so they'd have a Mercedes S-Clot. Yeah. A new Lamborghini or... as a plank. That should be called the Toyota. Life hasn't worked out quite as well as I'd oh. hoped. <laughs> That's what it should be called. That's dark. No, but the thing I like about this is that all those small cars with the intelligent names tend to be really cutesy and uchi kuchi koo, which always annoys me. But I think that is actually quite a funky shape. No, it's a good looking little car. But, exactly but how much is it? Well, that's the point. Ten grand. Yeah. Quite well, a lot. That's 3,000 quid too much. Yeah. So it actually should be called the Toyota, I really am a clot, I've spent £3,000 too much on my car, is what it actually should be. <laughs> you know how some cars now have fingerprint recognition? Like the Audi A8, you put your fingerprint oh, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. it starts it. Yeah. Well, that technology is coming and it's spreading to other things. And I'm slightly worried about it. My brother, this weekend, burnt his finger on a hot kebab skewer at a barbecue. And, well, he had the same system on his computer, locked him out of his laptop, put his finger on it, didn't recognise it, all burnt couldn't get in. So if it had an Audi A8? Well, it'd have been locked out. I'd well, there's another Top Gear top tip right there.
If you've got a kitchen, cook your food in there, particularly for Australian. Don't do it over coal in the garden. Yes, yeah, he's right, actually. This is a very, very straightforward lifestyle choice, I think. You either embrace the modern world and the ADA8, or you live like a medieval tramp. <laughs> Anyone here like barbecues? I quite like a barbecue. You like a barbecue? So what, you enjoy being stung by wasps? Well, sometimes I've gone too long without a really good dose of the squits, and yeah. a barbecue is the only way to... <laughs> Yes, that'll do it. And it does. Do you bring your time. mates up and say, do you want to come round? I'm doing mustard-encrusted illness. Yes. Uh, this evening. <laughs> yes. Now, the Mexicans. The Mexicans have built a new car. Mm -hmm. it's, got, has uh, it got a sombrero? No, it hasn't. Has it got a big floppy moustache? No. Well, it like your boyfriend. A, it's a supercar. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, no, it's a supercar. Here it is. It's called the Mastretta MXT. Have a look at that. It does have a big floppy moustache, James. It kind of not really. It does. Are they going to put that into production? Yes, they are. Are they going to bring it to the UK? No. It's going to be available in California, where it'll come round and clean out your swimming pool. <laughs> um, do you know what Mexico is? Good. You know what all Mexicans... No, forget it. <laughs> you know the Citroen Berlingo? Yes. Are you aware of a French car company called Citroen? <laughs> there we are, a good car show. He's wondering why you're not Ray Mears. <laughs> That's what it is. Look, the thing is, right, Citroen have introduced this new car called the Berlingo. Uh, we've got a picture of it here, the new one, new version, there it is. Uh, now, it's the first car ever to have a ski box in the roof, actually built in. So technically, that's the first car ever to have a loft. <laughs> I mean, it's ripe for a loft conversion. Yes. You could get like an extra lavatory up there and maybe a bedroom. So you put some Romanians up there. No, wait, no BAFTA for that! Dang! We've just lost a BAFTA! Anyway, uh, sadly, I don't have a price for it yet, but it won't be much. Well, it's a Citroen, so it won't be as much as it says in the brochure. No, yeah, whatever, that. whatever that number turns out to be, take away most of it. Yeah, exactly. If, if they say £7,000, go to the dealer and say, I've got a pound, and he'll say, that'll do. Yes. That's what they do with all Citroens. Uh, oh, no, okay. You know, we, we've talked in the past about the Ferrari owners club. It's a club for people who own a lot of things with a Ferrari badge on, but not an actual Ferrari. Uh, well, there's something uh, this week uh, new that they can waste their money on. Here it is. It's a radio. Do you know how much it costs? £1,500. If you take the badge off, it's 50p. <laughs> Well, that gives me an excellent money-making idea, then, because surely I could just go uh, find the skip, take some stuff out, stick Ferrari badges on and sell it for a fortune. Easy. Yeah. Ferrari owners club would snap your hand off. This single training shoe covered in an unusual slime with a Ferrari badge, £800. I've got a Ferrari anodized black TV stand with a caster missing, if you're mm -hmm. interested. How much? It's £4,000. £4,000. <laughs> they would. Anyone here from the Ferrari owners club? Oh, no, I won't go to your show. There's not enough chassis numbers in it for my taste. Rejoice! The Vauxhall Vectra is dead. Yeah, it's yeah. gone. And here's, here's its replacement. It's the Insignia. And first things first, you've got to say it's a good-looking thing. It's, it no, is, actually. It is, and it's not alone. Because if you notice how many mainstream cars are coming along these days that look brilliant. Yes. Um, what was I looking at this morning? Citroen C5. That's a fabulous that is looking. Brilliant. Yeah. And that Renault Laguna Coupe. And the Saloon. And yeah. there's that Passat CC. And yes. the Mondeo. That's a good looking. Yeah. In fact, yeah. we're rapidly approaching the point where the only ugly car on the road is the Ferrari 430. Well, that... <laughs> you're right. Well, it is. It's nowhere near as good looking as that. Oh, now, before we finish, you know the Sanyong Rexton? Yes, Jeremy. What's it like? Well, the... <laughs> Well, I know that's what's very coming. convincing. I know. I know. We rang uh, Sanyong the other day to see if we could borrow one of these to see what it was like, and the public relations man said, "No, I have other priorities." <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like he's very confident in it, does no. it? Well, it depends. I mean, if on the, oh, when I rang him up, he was actually on fire. If he'd spontaneously combusted, he's going, "No, I've got other priorities." That would make sense. Or if he was in bed with you. <laughs> If he found the code. If he found the code and was in bed with you, then that would be a reasonable thing. But I suspect you're probably right. He's just, his main priority in life is making sure us three don't get hold of his horrible car. Have we done? <laughs> <laughs> Have we done? Does anybody want to buy that here? No. So that's 100% of British people don't want a Sanyon Rexton. Another survey, and you're wrong. It's a top survey. <laughs> Hey, you know, um, you know everyone in Britain now has to wear a high-visibility jacket? Yeah. If you're a postman or a milkman or you go within 30 miles of a quarry, ooh, we must go with a hard hat on everything. Turns out you now have to wear a high-visibility jacket when you're on holiday. What, a high-visibility swimming trunks? No, 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 no. The French have quietly announced, very quietly, 
that now, by law, you must have a high visibility uh, jacket in your car while driving through France. What, they're going to stop and inspect you for? No, if they stop you for something else, you haven't got one. It's 130 euro uh, fine, 90 if you pay quickly, or actually 30 euros if you just slip it into the uh, gendarme's top pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is, if you want an economical car, buy a BMW M3. No, I'm not actually. No, seriously, what I'm saying is, it isn't what you drive that matters, it's how you drive it. That is everything. He's right, right actually. Right. Yes, it's true. So, what are the ways you can change your driving then? One, ignore everything written in those handy cut out and keep guides in the newspaper. You see, look, there are a remove lot. your roof rack. Who's what? got a roof rack? <laughs> if you're on your way to see the latest carry on film, don't whatever you do keep your. Uh, Terry and June haven't had a roof rack. We nobody's got roof no, racks. No, nobody has them. You could take other bits off your car, though, to make it more aerodynamic, like... If you were, well, if you've got a Nissan Micra, you could take off the door mirrors, because yeah. nobody ever uses them with Micras. <laughs> Likewise, any van. White vans. Oh, I get yeah. this. Aerodynamics is good. So, if you're transporting barn doors, say, mm. carry them flat, not vertical in front of a car like that. That's the, other one, the other one the uh, newspapers are doing is uh, remove excess weight. Don't carry a jack or a spare weight. I mean, that's oh. ridiculous. What if you get a puncture? But you could go on a diet. <laughs> Actually, do you really need both kidneys to drive? <laughs> Save a bit of weight there. Technically, you don't need both of your testicles. No, you don't. Really. Did you drive here today? You did? Yeah. You don't need any. You haven't, exactly. No <laughs> testicles and she's made it. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's a weight saving right So there. I'm going to cut my ears off for the drive home. Because I, I don't need them. It's worth it. You save weight. You, you could get rid of that spoiler at the back. No, that'll ruin the handling. It's not worth doing that. But if you did crash, it would be very economical. That's true. I'm going into this tree using hardly any fuel at all, because I have no spoiler on the back. Good night. <laughs> hey, have you, have you seen this? What? Look, have you seen this? There. Have they put a Ferrari badge on that? No. Well, sort of, because that's the new, Well, that's what you get when you take your Enzo into the dealership for a service. That's the they new, give you that? That's the new Ferrari <laughs> courtesy car. They've bought hundreds of these little Fiat 500s. They've had them painted Ferrari red. Like that makes a difference. Uh, it's got a special exhaust on it, and it's got special limited edition writing engraved on the kit plate as you get into it. It's what, what does it say? My other car really is a Ferrari. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Mind you, you know what you get when you take an Aston in? An Aston Martin, you take it in for a service. Get what, guess what courtesy car you get? A Ford. Monday Ford, a what? Focus ST. A, a Focus KO? KO. Ford Cat. A Cat. You see, that's its name. You just, otherwise, it's noise. Cat, no, not a Cat. <laughs> Anyone else got any ideas? Mondain, no, no. The answer is nothing. What? Actually, no, no, that reminds me. No, they don't give you a courtesy car. The, the other amazing one is I bought a Mercedes SL a while back, and it was an AMG one. It was an expensive one, okay? And my wife took it in because it was, uh, they'd recalled it. So it was something that was their fault. Fixed the brake, said, oh, can I have a courtesy car? No. Well, can I call for a cab? And they said, yeah, there's a payphone over there. <laughs> yeah. What I'd like to do, though, you know, all car dealers, are, they're all into greyhound racing. If you are, you've got to complain. They are, right? You're not. You, you, um, have you a car dealer? No. no but, <laughs> but you know, how many car dealers have got greyhounds? A lot. a lot. Exactly. As I was saying earlier, and these two didn't believe me. If you're unhappy with the service, bone his dog. <laughs> when, when you say bone his dog. I mean, take its bones Got out. Gotcha, sorry, I just for one okay, horrible moment. It's before the watershed, explain <laughs> what you thought I was on no, about. No, fine, let's move on. Uh, now, you see this week, actually, without wishing to get too question time on you, did you see this week the Iraqi oil minister and Mr. Mohammed J. Dieselberger, <laughs> in a steps of it, <laughs> he went on television because he's, he's, he's announcing that uh, foreign companies can now come in and bid to run the Iraqi oil fields, okay? I'd love to see a Frenchman going in there. Bonjour. <laughs> J'avais un bureau d'huile dans Paris. Get out! <laughs> yes. There's a German would go in and go, Guten Tag, Herr Dieselberger. Ich habe ein Get out. <laughs> yeah, but Bonjour, no. Get out. Get out. What? How do you win, do you think? Yeah, basically, you just, if you walk in there and your name's Brad Thrust, <laughs> and you run a company called, I don't know, Halliburton, uh, Technically, we should be allowed to. Well, no, because they're going to get the lot. We'll be allowed to do the urinals in the shower block. <laughs> That's basically what we're going to get. BMW have built a concept car. It's called the Gina. Uh, here it is. The important thing to know about this car is the body. That body is not metal. It's fabric. And you can see it creasing here where the doors are up like arms on a shirt. You see them will crease and, well, that's no good. You'll get 
sweat patches all round here, and it's... That's a brilliant idea, that, because car panels don't need to be metal. No. Well, why wouldn't you make them out of fabric? You could have a linen one. No, not linen, because that crumples and makes you look fat. No, not linen, something else. Well, I'd order it in uh, smart casual. Yes, because then you could change it in the evening, put a bow tie on it, it could have an evening dress Or car. a funeral. It's Anything. fantastic. No, What's look, wrong with it? My point is, this is a rubbish idea. Look, I have another picture here. Look, it's split! No, that's no, the that's zip. The... That's the zip so you can get at the engine. It's got flight. It's got flight. Yes. yes. All you've got to be do, just be careful you don't zip your bell housing up in it when you're... <laughs> you're <laughs> Or your big end. Yeah. No, it's a rubbish idea. That is just a bag with a car in it. It's a well, if Jag did one, they could call it the E-Type bag. Yes, all right. If Renault did one, they could call it the Espace People Carrier Bag. Stop saying stupid <laughs> things. It's a stupid, stupid <laughs> idea. And it gets worse, because they say it's got... Underneath it, the structure sort of deforms and moves, and there's a spoiler that rises up under the, the material, and the grill moves, and that's just going to look like a car trapped in a bag, struggling to get out. It'll scare children. It's a stupid idea. You could put a sticker on the back saying, my other car's a tea towel. That's a stupid <laughs> idea, Honestly, too. I always said, get on and make that. <laughs> oh, we saw this parked outside our office the other day. <laughs> I'm not joking. That is a London ambulance bicycle. Yeah, but... What I'll... possible use is that? Yeah, but hold on. We did that race across London, didn't we, the three of us? And I was on a bicycle, and I won. So you can get there. No, I agree. You can get there very fast. Then what do you do? There you have a point. Yes, you do, actually. <laughs> actually, there isn't room you, on the front to write Ek and the Ludbert, is No, there, there so isn't. Do you know, honestly, I was looking into this. The man who thought of it, OK, he apparently got in touch with the ambulance service and said, I'm a very keen cyclist. Well, that's not good enough. It isn't. I mean, I've got a space hopper in the loft somewhere. I'm not going <laughs> to... That up and this, dear Mr. Ambulance Chief, I was a clean equestrian. I was wondering if I could use my horse as an ambulance. I hope it's into hot air balloons, actually. Yeah, I'd love to come to you, but the wind's in the wrong direction. It will be tricky when it arrives. Thank God you're here. My husband's had a heart attack. He's 42 stone. He needs to go to hospital. That's I mean, not... look what it's done to the man's face. It's all gone pixelated. With the effort. Yes. Ooh. Do you think he has to ride along going, ooh? <laughs> <laughs> That's rubbish. It's not it? comforting to know no, that. It isn't. Um, right, that is the end of the news.